Machining is an art. It is an absolute art. Every person has their workmanship. These tools are amazing. Each machine has so many different variables from the rigidity in the table into the spindle to your work holding, the material that you're machining, the tool that you're using. And these tools have actually been designed to actually cut fast. The problem is most people, you know, were running so slow that they still only run the tools at 20, 30% of their capabilities. So we always measure by minutes in cut to see how long a tool can last. But if you're like in aluminum or plastic or something, or even soft steels and stuff, I mean, you can run hard for a long time. And even when it comes to like Inconel and titanium, how many minutes in cut can you actually do it? So if we're doing the Kenna Metal Harvey 3, I know that this tool lasts hours in cut at 400 surface foot, 0.0053 chip load. I have that information bank and we're roughing. When we take apart, let's attack it. Let's make sure all our variables are like good. We got that Synergy 735 coolant on there. We got everything happening. And then let's murder that material and get it done 10 times faster, all roughed out. But then all of a sudden, we're just going to relax that pressure, let it move. And through experience, we're going to know exactly where it moves. So we leave the right amount of material. And then we're going to drop those RPMs. We're going to drop everything. And we're going to come back and we're just going to kiss it and kiss it like just a, oh we're just gonna kiss it and we're gonna bring that tolerance in and we're gonna take it out and we're gonna have pride that not only did we rough fast and hard but we came back and we kissed it right into tolerance right into tense and then we delivered a part that was of crazy quality where our customers can basically be like you know what this is like jewelry Whenever you guys hear me saying run hard, run hard, run hard, I'm always saying rough as hard as you can, understanding the tools capabilities, talk to the companies that actually make the tools, find out where they say that it should be, and then measure in cut, like get the timing down. How long does it actually take and rough? Make that money because if you're running at 100 inches a minute and you can run at 800 inches a minute, then that's eight times faster and you can actually go lower and actually create lower on price and actually create a good profit. Even if you're at 400 inches a minute. So like roughing, like we don't do everything at 800, but at three, 400, that's just normal. That's just normal but then come back and kiss it and bring in that quality and make it beautiful. So rough hard, finish and kiss it. But at the same time, instead of using a three flute to like do it, maybe you're using a five flute. Maybe you're using a six or seven flute to actually come back and kiss it fast because you have the extra flutes, the extra rigidity, and it's just good. One thing that I'll say also is that all your machinists, they basically, uh, they can't just run the way they want to run. Because you have everything documented, you have the tool documented, the time and cut documented, the speeds and feeds documented for each type of material, you find out what is best, you document it, you bank it, and then the whole team works off that, yep. right? And if, if somebody wants to challenge it, you let them challenge it. Or you got something better, show me. If not, this is the way that we're doing it. The amount of money we've done, made, the amount of bids we've like just taken from people and stuff because we run fast and save them money and the marketing behind that, it's all worthwhile.